What's up all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar and Astonishing Melanie. And we are here to review this wonderful book from DC called Harleen. So please stay tuned. This review of Harleen is full of spoilers because it's just so much fun to talk about this great story. Like, I I can't help myself. I called it wonderful Maybe. in the intro, so that kind of spoils what my <laughs> rating is going to be. But yes, it is uh, going to be full of spoilers. So mm -hmm. in case you haven't read it or, uh, I don't know, maybe you don't care about spoilers or you've read it, you know, stay and uh, let's see what you all think. Leave those comments down below. One of the things I will say really quick before uh, Sasha Melanie gives us a synopsis is that the book is part of the DC Black Label line. And the DC Black Label line is kind of like their own little pocket universe. Think of Elseworlds. Think of Vertigo. Uh, as a matter of fact, Vertigo titles are now going to be printed in Black Label, such as the case of the Sandman box set. Uh, Superman Year One and Batman Damned have all had that Black Label line. Some of them are adult-oriented such as the case in this so uh, definitely mature content is what this is so let's talk about Harleen and this wonderful slip cover you kept going on about so awesome I seriously I'll just take it on and off and look and look and think about how he made her eyes look different and oh gosh okay technology right and one of the things about the slip cover by the way uh, also you know besides it being a really cool gimmick is that it's only available for the first printing. So once this sells out and the second printing comes out, they won't have the slip cover. It'll just have a regular cover. Mm -hmm. Now, Stanchi Melanie, Wait. synopsis. Oh, okay. So Harleen is Harley Quinn's Christian guy given name. Her she, house name. Her house name. <laughs> what? I was thinking of cats. <laughs> right? Street uh, names? Uh, never mind. <laughs> oh, you love that movie. That anyway. movie sucked. Spoilers. <laughs> go, go ahead. The. Uh, she is a research psychiatrist. She's wanted to do research by interviewing the criminally insane. At Arkham. Yes, to um, develop a new method of treating and counseling. Yeah. And how, however, before she even gets started, she meets the Joker on the street. He puts a gun to her face. He doesn't kill her. So she lives... And she's scared to death to interview him at Arkham Asylum, so she puts him off. Um, she's obsessed with that, too, why he let her live, and that will come back into play well, yeah, later on. Yeah, yeah. Um, she quickly learns that he's just telling lies when she does interview him. Uh, she's bound determined to get him to say something that was honest, and oh, goodness, it was about her. He gets well, her to uh, call her Mr. J., uh, Let's throw back to the cartoon, which we'll talk about here yeah. in a few minutes. Uh, it, so she she is kind of two sided. Oh my gosh, like Harvey Dent. Well, we'll get to She's, uh, um, she genuinely cares about the people and wants to help them. So that is a compassion for the Joker. But then she starts finding him, you know, sexually attractive and watching how he sleeps and blah blah blah. Who else believes that she's trying to help these people? Batman. Bruce Wayne. Yep. But whereas Bruce Wayne believes in her, Harvey Dent wants her to stop. So this is Harvey Dent before he becomes Two-Face. And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, too, because this is kind of his origin story, too. Oh, yeah. It's kind yeah. of thrown in there. And I don't know how much I like that. Like, he's... I get the idea that we need this antagonist that's like, no, stop this project. You're foolish. Because everybody's the same no matter what. You can't turn people, right? But I don't know. It felt a little forced. I disagree because already okay at the <laughs> end the video. Um, I mean, at the, I see at the at the beginning it does feel forced, but at the end when he is to face and the points he's making about people not changing, mm -hmm. I mean that's all into play with their relationship, the Joker and Harley Quinn. Maybe it's and, because it was too much, right? Like I, I want the origin of Harley Quinn. Uh, I don't need the origin of Harvey Dent. Maybe that's what... My, but anyway... I see, I see. It's just your personal preference. It is, so I'm sorry. Continue. Um. So, they, we've got it... Um, it all comes to a head when Harley... Harley Dent. <laughs> Harvey Dent. Uh, she makes that connection makes a <laughs> later on. Not my wife, Har Harley. Oh, is that what she was doing? She was writing it on the wall. <laughs> I know, but I didn't get that. Who with our minds... We read we one good book. <laughs> so, Harley Quinn, her hand is forced to 
protect her love, right? And then she kind of snaps. It, it, I think one of my favorite parts of the book, though, is out of all of this, Alfred gets the best line. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so let, let, let's talk a little bit about what leads up to this, because I think that's important. Because there's a gang of like uh, police officers oh, are going around. Oh, I was just leaving around. out some spoilers, but okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I mean, we can. We totally can. Uh, there's a gang of. Uh, I think this is important, right? Because this kind of plays into the Har Harvey. You know, eventually Harvey Dent, yes, gets acid, and uh, he becomes Two Face. But the you know the justice system isn't going to do anything about it, so these police officers take it upon themselves to go around and hunt the guy down and ended up killing him, and then they're going around and killing all these bad guys, I guess. Which leads into Arkham, and then Harvey deciding, in his righteous mind, to let the criminals escape and let Gotham City see what you know what they're holding in Arkham Asylum, so they can execute these people. Which was kind of a weird uh, move, I get it. but okay, I get it. My, my wife got it. Okay, <laughs> um, but go ahead. Now, now we can talk a, a little bit about that. The ending that you were talking about when she makes. You... Well, that will be the spoiler-free part. Alfred gets the best line. Read till the end. Alfred gets the best <laughs> line. I just remember him disagreeing with Bruce. Bruce doesn't get it, and Alfred well, is the yes. one's like, Damn. Just "Don't say it, don't say it." All right. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Now, before we go any further with our thoughts, I did want to stop here and talk about this beautiful artwork mm -hmm. by Stepan Sajic. Stepan Sajic? Sajak? Finagly spell it in the comments below. If you Somebody know please help it. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's look at this artwork. Okay, so let's look at this artwork. But of course, let's take this slip cover off to talk about the internal work. So let's talk about... Sajik's artwork and how much cute he reminds me of Michael Turner so much more in this than anything I've ever seen him draw and that's basically because of the way that he draws her the way that he draws Harley oh yeah I see it mm -hmm. especially her hair right um and I think I, I meant I know that in the comments below when we did a Sunstone review that I found out that he had drawn Witchblade oh, oh. there we okay, go this is your favorite yes. image yes this is, well, one of them. Look how beautiful that is. That I love it. That love is the a angle. manly Batman and a really pretty joke. He draws a really pretty joke. Yes, he does. Mm -hmm. a, all right, all right, <laughs> easy there. No, he did a good job of uh, making the Joker a little bit more attractive and sexy. Well, I think I mean, you have to. She's attractive. Yeah, I know, She's I know. She's attractive to really him. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things I was going to say is that, you know, he's drawn things like uh, Witchblade. He's drawn things like uh, Darkness and books over at Top Cow. So it's a lot following the steps of Mark Silvestri and Michael Turner. But I think his artwork is just beyond that because he also paints this. I mean, he's also the colorist on this. Ooh. So he knows the little shortcuts to take. But, oh, my God, this is a this is a work of love. Like every mm -hmm. little bit, each one. I mean, there's not a panel in here that I think, oh, that could have been drawn better or anything. This is the part where, oh, no. where she's watching mm -hmm. him sleep. <laughs> Which, did you think that was cute? I thought it was uh, interesting. Did you just word the, use the word cute with Harley Quinn and Joker? Yeah, did you think that was cute that she was no, watching actually, him sleep? No, actually, I didn't. I didn't really think anything. Huh. Oh, okay. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> uh, I thought it was funny when he said, do you still... Uh, Watch me when I sleep or something like that later, like he knew. She, she was embarrassed. <laughs> we didn't talk about this because we didn't want you all to be surprised. For those of you that um, haven't read it and don't care about spoilers, but there are some really cool little Easter eggs in here and little cameos from Batman's villains besides uh, these characters here. Because, I mean, we're talking about Arkham Asylum, right? Now, let's look in the back here at the extras. And as we get to the back, we are going to look at the last page. So just as a spoiler, if you don't want to see the last page. Not that it's a huge spoiler, because I think everybody knows where this is going. That she, oh, she becomes Harley Quinn. But I, this is my favorite outfit. Look at that. I think well, it's nicely done. I mean, yeah, it is the classic Wait, did he create it? Bruce is Tim this, outfit. This... No, I mean, it's the Bruce Tim outfit, right? Well, no, From but it's a little bit. No, it's a little different. Okay. Here are the variant covers. Within the chapter breaks are the regular covers. And then the behind the scenes and how long this work took. Like, you know, mm, he pitched yeah, it all the way in 2015. Yeah. Uh, in 2017, he got to draw Suicide Squad. And then he got uh, pinned to do the Aquaman like series. That. And then I think in, yeah, 2018, so two years ago, he was told, okay, go ahead and start doing it. 
and then they started publishing them in 2019. So here's some of the original ideas that he mm -hmm. had that yeah. were done through his website. And it's just so much went into this. You know that Alex Ross painting of the Joker behind Harley Quinn? Yeah, yeah. I've always loved that. And there's some images that I think are um, on the same level. Oh, yeah. He is mm -hmm. a phenomenal artist, which is why <laughs> for a minute I thought about doing an overview of the book just with the artwork and us talking about oh, it. Oh, I love this. I love this one. Get a good shot of that. All right. Love this it. episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first-time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout, and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. What, what did you think? Can I give two separate scores for story and art? No, you may not. Hmm. Hmm. 7.5. No, ha! No. <laughs> ha! <laughs> I didn't want you to rate it. I wanted you to tell me about the book. I'm going to tell you why. So, I rate 7.5 out of 10 because, because. Uh, 7, I was thinking the story, like I said, it's fun. I really enjoyed it. I you, mean, I just read You didn't three. put it down. However, you know me and epics and really getting to my heart, that's those extra couple of points for the, for the top tier books. Now, uh -huh. the artwork... Actually, I won't move. It, that's like a, that's a 10 out of 10. Ooh, so I guess it should be 8.5. Um, this just is gorgeous. She really get an 8.5? Just let me change my mind. I appreciate this artwork and um, that one image that reminded me of Sunstone. He snuck one in. Of course you have to with this, right? Well, he even snuck in a safe word. <laughs> yes, yes, I love that. <laughs> um, just... Her face was awesome. The expressions on her face. His mouths. His mouths are gorgeous. The way he draws his mouths. Very Michael Turnish, which I mentioned when we were looking at the Better than Michael Turnerish. Rest in peace, Michael Turner. But I, I guess, yes. No if offense. Ma if Michael Turner had evolved, I think he would have become much like this. Oh, like CJ, okay. Honestly. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I thought it was one of the better reads of 2019. It was a great book. It was a lot of fun to read in one sitting. Um, mm -hmm. Instead of waiting for the monthly issues to come out, their dialogue is kind of heavy and repetitive. It's why it's an 8 out of 10. Because, I mean, yes, the artwork, my God, if it was just artwork alone, 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> but because uh, you know, we also words. have the story, the the characters. Um, you know, for the most part, I enjoyed the takes on. I love the 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 idea of throwing a little thing in there between her and Ivy, even towards the end when he talks yeah. about the the original ideas that he had. So if you've read Mad or if you've watched the Batman animated series and have watched the episode Mad Love, that's basically what this is. Because I mean, Harley was created by Paul Dini and Bruce Timm, so this is like an adult version of Mad Love. Definitely, you know, mature content. Because I mean, there is sex. There's a lot. What I found interesting was the use of the f bomb, right? Yeah. One time it was censored, and the other times it wasn't. So I don't. Know. Well, no, it's not censored when you're saying it like a verb. It's censored when you're talking about the act. That's what I've noticed when they're talking about the act of, of mm -hmm. dropping the F-bomb, right? Wait, this is mature content. I don't know who's watching this. Sorry, I just assume kids are watching. Copa, <laughs> thanks. Uh, <laughs> so, I don't know. For me, eight, 8 out of 10. It was a great book. It was a lot of fun. Highly recommended. One of the best books to come out in 2019. I'm, his writing is so much better to me in this than it was in Sunstone. I think his uh, his writing has gotten a lot better, and I can't wait maybe to see because, him more. Right? That was that his own thing, kind of. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. baby. Yeah. And in this, he was, I'm sure, forced by editors to condense. Well, right. You that it couldn't go on forever. Um, because I agree. Near the end, I did skim some of her bubbles <laughs> and dialogue because I was like, I I know what she's saying, and I really want to get to what happens. <laughs> but you know what? It's gonna happen. I know. <laughs> You've seen bad luck, but yeah. So that's that's our review. Any less things you wanted to add besides the mouths and how much you really like this? You said you, he draws the perfect mouth. Yeah, that's it. He draws the perfect mouth. 
Okay. So <laughs> thank you for watching. Let us know in the comments down below what you thought of this book. Uh, if we rated it too high, what would you have rated it out of 10? And again, this was the Uncanny Omar and... Yeah, astonishing Melanie. And don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. Thank you to our patrons. And if you want to join our Patreon, all that information is in the description down below. We're also on Redbubble where you can get our t-shirts. Not these, obviously. <laughs> on, in Redbubble with our logo. Um, and that's it. And if it's classy and cool... It must be near mint. Thank you.